Welcome everyone. Good to see you uh, online today. Bethel, Bethel Youth, and also all of our online viewers. It is so good to be with you today. Uh, we long for so much to actually be with you face to face, and we do hope and pray uh, that that time comes before long. But we're so glad to get to be with you today online uh, and getting to dig into God's Word uh, with you. Uh, we are praying for you uh, right now. Our thoughts are on you and our prayers are definitely with you. Um, just a couple of special uh, mentions that were shared with me. Um, keep, please keep um, Brother Sam in prayers as he will be uh, shipping out for training uh, very soon as he has joined the Marines. So please pray for him. Also, all of our men and women in arms uh, that are putting their lives on the line every day for our country and the freedoms that are recognized and the, the protection of those freedoms. So let's pray for them. Um, pray for our, our medical staff um, and many people um, that are still uh, able to go to work and needing to go to work um, to keep the communities going, um, to keep the health services open uh, for each and every one of us. Let's pray for them, um, that God would be with them, that he would protect them, and that we would see this uh, cleared up hopefully before long. Uh, please also keep in prayer uh, Jason Walker's dad. He requests prayer for him as well. Um, let's go to the Lord now in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We come to you in this hour. Uh, before we even make a request known to you, you know all things. Uh, you know our hearts. Uh, you know um, what is on our hearts, what is troubling us, what we're facing in our lives. Uh, but we just come to you pleading on, on the behalfs of each other. Uh, just pray that your will would be done, um, even right now in every single situation, uh, that your will would be done, and we trust you and your wisdom and your will. Uh, just pray that you be with our military, uh, with all of our law enforcement, uh, with different services that put their lives on the lines every day to keep us safe. Um, even right now, the medical field, they're putting their lives on the line right now to uh, see the healing and, and seeing the safety of um, our citizens. We just pray that you protect them, that you protect their families. We pray that you would um, give them the wisdom and the knowledge um, to minister, um, to, um, to serve um, each and every one that come, they come in contact with, that they may get better. Uh, we just come to you now, though, knowing that you are the great, great physician, um, praying that your will be done. Um, just also um, recognizing who you are. You are Almighty God. You are Creator. You are Sustainer. Please be with us now as we get a closer look at you uh, and who you are. And we pray that that would affect the way that we live, live our lives each and every day. Um, that we not walk um, by sight, but that we walk by faith um, in every situation we face in our life. We love you. We thank you. We are praying for all those that may have special um, requests on their hearts right now. Uh, we are praying for them. Uh, we are praying for all the listeners that we may grow closer to you. But even right now, if there's one that is lost, that's never received Christ as their personal Savior, we pray that you would convict and that they would be saved before it's too late. We love you. We thank you. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Turn with me now, if you will, to the book of Mark chapter 4. Uh, we'll look at verses 35 through 41. Um, here it says, On the same day, um, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little ships were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
We'll even look here. Um, it says even on that same day, uh, what has already happened is Jesus has already spent uh, much time near the Sea of Galilee uh, preaching to the multitudes. We, we've seen different times where thousands of people even amassed to Jesus. Um, hearing of um, the authority in which Jesus spoke in um, and also some of the miracles that Jesus had performed. So we see um, a multitude amass and he would even uh, part out a little bit of a way um, in, in the boat um, to actually kind of act as a uh, ampli amphitheater kind of off the water and bouncing off the hills behind and we'd have those thousands of people listening to the amazing uh, teachings of Christ. But we see after that long day, uh, Jesus told them, uh, look, let us get in the boat. Let us cross over to the other side. Uh, what we'll know he'll do after this is he would uh, visit the other side, kind of a uh, pre-planned thing uh, by God himself. And he would cast uh, demons uh, out of this man that was possessed, um, perform this great miracle there. But he tells him, look, let's go to the other side. Um, he didn't say, let's attempt to go to the other side. Um, he didn't say um, some of these other things. Hopefully, we'll get to the other side. He said, let us cross over to the other side. Um, so, however, what occurs on their path there, their trip there, it says in 37, and a great windstorm arose. Um, Luke would even kind of use words that would uh, bring the idea um, and a windstorm came down on the sea. It would smash down um, on the sea. Um, the geography, if you would even just read a little bit even about um, the Sea of Galilee, the geography there, uh, the way the mountains are set up and um, designed by God, um, there would be great storms that would amass. Um, this is likely one of the greatest storms that even ever came uh, to that location of the Sea of Galilee. So we have seasoned men uh, very likely James, John, uh, Peter, and Andrew, uh, who are all seasoned fishermen, uh, we see them um, at this time taken and fearful at this storm that came. Uh, so very likely uh, this storm was one of the biggest that these men had ever seen. Uh, but as they are, are going over um, this, again, this great windstorm, this great storm uh, comes, uh, comes about, it just arises out of nowhere, um, this says that the waves beat into the boat so that it was what? So that it was already filling, right? So water is already coming into the boat. Um, the water, the, the boat is being filled with water, getting almost to the point to where it would be sinking. Um, but where is Jesus when all this is happening? We see all the men, all the other men, they're awake, they're frightened uh, about the storm that has come upon them. But where's Jesus? It says in um, verse 38, it says, but he was in the stern, but Jesus was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Jesus intentionally had a pillow there to intentionally go to sleep. Um, this is neat because this brings out even the humanity of Christ. Christ had been serving all this time, ministering all this time, preaching pouring his heart out and preaching and teaching this whole time that his body bega became weary. He needed rest. So he intentionally went to the pillow and went to sleep in this journey, this trip across the, the Sea of Galilee. Um, but then what does it say? It says, and they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I don't imagine that they woke him in calmness. We don't know, but uh, I doubt they uh, awoke him in calmness. Uh, I, I figured they probably uh, went and approached him quickly, woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are dying? Don't you care that the, the, sink is about, the ship is about to sink and that we are dying? Our, our life is in danger right now. But what, what happens then? It says in verse 39, it says, then he arose, then Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. What happens next? So Jesus rebukes the wind and tells the sea, peace, or also be quiet, be still. What happens? the wind responds to his voice. 
It says, And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Just imagine right in the midst of this horrible storm, one of the greatest storms that you've ever seen, uh, where you're, it put you in fear of even your life. You thought you were about to die in the midst of the storm. And then Jesus says, Peace and be still, and the storm completely ceases. Um, there's complete calm, a great calm. But then what else happens? It says, but he said to them, he says to the disciples that were in the boat with him, he, said, he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Uh, he's also saying, look, why do you still not have faith? Or why in this situation are you um, exhibiting no faith, placing no faith? Um, so again, in the midst of this crazy storm, um, it's an opportunity for faith lesson for the disciples. Uh, much like with us, um, in the middle of any storm, maybe even the storm that you're facing right now, or that even our nation as a whole, our world as a whole is facing, um, where is our faith, right? Are we considered people right now of no faith? Or are we using this opportunity to grow in great faith, to place faith in God and what he has said, his promises, his nature? What does it say next in 41? It says, And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? that even the wind and the sea obey him. So just imagine that for a second. And I hope we ask ourselves that same question. Imagine who Christ is. I want us right now, um, it doesn't matter if you're in a calmness in your life or in the middle of a storm in your life. If anything, with this passage, uh, with this event that happened in history and was recorded for us, by eyewitnesses, inspired of God, let us right now truly get a glimpse of who Jesus is. It says, who can this, uh, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him, right? Or what manner of man is this? How in the world can he speak and tell the wind to cease, right? Um, for the wind and the sea to have peace and be still, and then there'd be complete calm, right? Well, again, take into account who Jesus is. Uh, I want us to just take a moment. I'm going <clears> to <throat> share with you just a, a, a few places in Scripture that tell a little bit more about who Jesus is. Uh, because I guarantee you, when we are reminded who Jesus truly is, or maybe if you're listening today and you don't quite know yet who Jesus is, uh, let us uh, listen to what God says, uh, even about who Jesus is. Uh, but before we get there, we're going to look at um, uh, John chapter 1. Also, we're in the book of Mark right now, Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. Um, but before we look at those few verses, I want to encourage you. Um, these men, these disciples that were following Jesus even at this time, um, their faith uh, was not always perfect. Um, there were times where they doubt, they feared, they ran, uh, they did different things. But um, again, it was a learning time. It was a, a, a time of their faith needing to grow. Same with, with all of us as believers. Our faith needs to continue to grow. It needs to continue to increase. So don't be discouraged um, in your own life if you have different times in your life where um, you you have, have doubted where you have been fearful, um, where you have been troubled. Uh, but even let that be a reminder right now in the midst of it. Uh, remind yourselves of who Christ is and ask yourself, where is my faith right now? Um, where is my faith right now? Let's look now to uh, Mark 1 and 1. We're reading in Mark, Mark right now, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark. But it begins, it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Son of God. Again, his intent was to tell the gospel, the great news about Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, the promised one, 
the savior of the world, but also it says that he's the, what? The son of God. Jesus, the son of God, the only begotten son of God, a miraculous virgin birth, right? This Jesus. We would also see, guys, this is um, the son of God, but this is God in the flesh, right? Part of the triune God. Um, we see this as God in the flesh. If, if you want to look a little bit more deeper into this, John chapter 1, starting in verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was, the, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So again, what does it say? This great gospel of John, um, he, he's saying, look, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. But not only was the word with God in the beginning, but also the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, right? And it says, and all things are made through him. Right? So everything that was made was made even through the Word, was made even through Jesus. Um, but it, now look at verse 14 of, of John chapter 1. It says something about that Word. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who does that sound like? Sounds like Jesus. It is definitely speaking about Jesus. This is a gospel of Jesus. This is the good news about Jesus. So again, we have the word, um, all of God's heart um, towards you, um, his expression towards you, all of his nature, all of his plans. We see that his word became flesh, Jesus, right? So, um, Again, ask yourself, who is Jesus? Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. Um, just a little bit um, back in one of our uh, messages that we aired to you, um, we looked at Psalms 46. Psalms 46, we reread verses 1 through 3. Uh, but the amazing thing, you would, if you drop down a little bit more in verses uh, 10 and 11, I'm actually going to reread verses 1 through 3 and then go on to uh, verse 10. But it says here, very relevant to what we're facing right now. Um, if you're not going through a difficult time now, there will come times in your lives where you will. So in light of all that, let us take um, strength. Let us take encouragement in what Psalms 46 says. It says, God is our refuge, right? He is where we run to for protection, for safety, for rest, for stillness. It says, and he is our strength, right? Almighty God, creator God, omnipotent God, all even all powerful God, it is him that is our strength. I pray that we can say that, that God is our strength, that you are not taking strength in your own self, in your own abilities, that you're not taking strength and thinking that you were in control, but you know that always that God is in control. It says he is a very present help in trouble. He is always ready to help us in any moment of trouble and always. It says, therefore, we will not fear. Again, we ask ourselves who God is. We ask ourselves who the Lord is. Um, I ask you, is, is, is to you, is he your refuge? Is he your strength? Do you recognize right now that he is there to help you even right now or even at any moment? Will you then say that powerful um, um, truth in verse two? It says, therefore, we will not fear. Will you not fear right now? Um, again, when we go back to the, to the place where they're in the boat with Jesus in Mark chapter four, uh, again, he asked him, look, even though there's this raging storm that's around you from, 
from your walking by sight and not by faith, by sight, you might think, look, this water is overflowing the boat almost. We're about to die, right? But he, when he even says to them in the midst of that situation, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Again, if we find ourselves fearful, we need to remind ourselves of that, that, that question that was asked, who can this be, right? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Lord? Remind yourself right now who, who God is, who the Lord is, who Jesus is. It says, um, even though we're going to pick back up in Psalms 46, verse 2, midway through verse, verse 2, it says, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar, we saw that in, in Mark, Mark, two, Mark 4, um, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Salah. If you will jump down to verse 10 of 46, it says, be still, right? So the first part of it, 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 it talks about who God is, even in the midst of your troubles. Even in the midst of the chaos of the world that you are living in today, the challenge for you is to realize who God is. Uh, is the challenge is to you to, to use this as an occasion to grow in your faith, to use this as an occasion to stop and say, look, I'm not going to walk by sight right now. I'm going to walk by faith. This world is full of chaos and it always will be. And as the time, the end of times approaches, um, it will become more chaotic. But I challenge you to do verse 10. I challenge you, as, as God says, he tells you. It, it, it again switches um, uh, to first person. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. My challenge to you right now, my friend, um, is even am amongst the chaos, even, um, it may not even just be the chaos of, of, of the world going through this virus right now. It might be the chaos. You might be uh, in the middle of, of a marriage that's falling apart. You might have just gotten news of a terminal illness. You might have lost a loved one that you have been walking through life with for the majority of your life. You might be losing your job. You might be uh, on unstable grounds, uncertainty that you might think that you might lose your job. That's the, that's the state that we are in as a nation. But, but I, I challenge you amidst that chaos, amidst the, even if the uh, mountains be carried away into the seas, uh, even, even amongst the greatest chaos you can imagine, will you stop and say, uh, I'm going to be still. I'm going to know that God is God. Amen. I'm going to know that God is God. Um, are we going to realize in verse 11, the Lord, the Lord of hosts is with us. Believer, take encouragement in that. Uh, unbeliever, know that you can call out at any moment and for the first time, uh, reach out to the hand of Jesus. Uh, reach out and call out to his name and that he would save, um, even in the time that you call out. But take, take, take encouragement in that. Know that he is with us. Know that he is our refuge. So the challenge of that, even, even in the language of being still and knowing that, that he is God, um, it is a challenge for you to stop frantically trying to fight a fight that you cannot win. Stop trying to be, get this, stop trying to be in control of a situation that you have no control over. That is a lesson that we need to be reminded of often. My friend, we're not in control of anything. God is in ultimate control. Um, so I challenge you, uh, as we face different situations where we have 
no control over, where we do not know what tomorrow will hold, we do know the one who does hold tomorrow and that holds us and that desires for best and will work all things together for our good and that loves us unconditionally and that love is never changing and the other great promises that he has given us, believer. So again, trust God. Use this time to trust God, to trust in his nature, to trust in his promises. Remember, look, be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he fights your battles. He is the one that brings victory. He is in control. So again, that question of who Jesus is, I hope by looking at those passages, you get a little bit more understanding of just exactly who God is, who the Lord is, who Jesus is. But just look at this with me for just a moment. Uh, you look at throughout all the Gospels, the great news about who Jesus is. They, they would um, detail, again, these eyewitnesses that walked with Jesus, that saw the miracles of Jesus. Um, they would see Jesus having power over even the spiritual world, right? Casting out demons. He would even be control in control of the physical world, right? Things that man cannot have control over. People that would have sicknesses from um, their whole life, people who would be lame um, since birth, they would come to Jesus and he would heal them. He would give sight to the blind. He would make the lame uh, walk again. Um, he would uh, even cast out demons, as we said, but he would even have control over, as we saw here in Mark 4, he would have control over nature itself, right? Where man does not have control over these things, Jesus showed himself to have control over these things. But if you don't think that's good, if you don't think that gets you excited about who Jesus is, the one in whom we serve, our Lord, if that doesn't excite you about who he is and what power he has, I'm going to read two more, two more um, small passages to you. John, verse, John chapter 11 and verse um, 25. It says here, um, this is actually after uh, Lazarus has died. Um, Jesus had tarried his coming. It was, this was four days after the death of Lazarus, a, a, one of the best friends even of Jesus. But Jesus would come. Uh, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, were there, but Jesus would speak this. It says in verse 25, it says, Jesus said to her, get this, again, their brother just died. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus would make many of these statements that are recorded in the book of John. The I am statements showing that he is God, that he is the I am. But he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes, get this, my friend, right now as you listen. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. My friend, I, I, I plead with you right now. Um, even though she saw the power that Jesus had, what, what would happen, guys, is he would raise Lazarus from the dead. He would even raise other people from the dead, even in his life and ministry here. But get this, guys, he would even, um, he would even prophesy his own death, but also his own resurrection. He said three days later in this temple will be raised. This temple, his own body would be raised. And guess what? That prophecy was fulfilled to the T. Jesus would die in our place, he would die for our sins, your sins and my sins, the sins of the world, right? The, the wrath, the punishment for our sin was fully satisfied in Jesus. But get this, three days later after clearly being dead, his disciples, the world, seeing and knowing that Jesus was dead, three days later, he would raise. The, the grave could not hold him the, and death could not keep him. Jesus Christ will be raised. 
And you see why he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Get this, I challenge you. He who believes in me, he who believes in Jesus, though he may die, my friend, you're going to die. Sadly, I hate to say that. I'm going to die. That's the truth of the matter. You will die, okay? We will die. Even though you may die, if you believe in Jesus, you will live. Amen? That is a calm assurance to you, believer. Um, and to you, my lost friend, if you're out there, you've never trusted in Christ, hear the testimonies that we plead, we share with you. These eyewitnesses that lived in Christ's day and time, uh, many of them would see Christ resurrected. Many of them would die um, for what they said they saw. They would give their life. They would give their life not for a lie. They would give their life for something that they absolutely knew was true. They knew that Jesus was the resurrection, that Jesus was the life. And even though they would um, die a martyrdom death, um, they knew that they would live again. I challenge you the same thing. Do you know that you're going to live again? Um, is your faith in Christ, the Son of God? Um, verse um, John, same, same book. I'm going to share this last few verses with you. You're in John 11 now. Jump, jump now to John 20. In verse 26. Actually, we don't need to read John 26. If, if, you, if, you get, if you get time, go back and look at this whole passage, amazing passage. Uh, Thomas would uh, miss uh, one of the appearances of Jesus uh, while all the disciples were gathered in the upper room. Uh, Thomas would miss that, um, uh, that coming of Christ, that um, appearance of Christ. Um, but then uh, he would be present again. And guess what? Thankfully, Jesus would appear to them again, but he would appear to them many other times later. He would spend many days with them later. Uh, they would eat with him. Uh, they would see him face to face. He would teach them even more mysteries and teachings from the Old Testament and how he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament, right? Um, but um, we see here in this occasion, you don't have to read verse 26, but jump down to verse 30. Um he would tell him, look, he's like, he's told Thomas, he's like, look, you can come right now. You see these hole prints in my hand and my feet. You see this um, spear hole in my side. Come and put your finger in these, right? If, if you don't believe, come and do this. But he even says, look, um, it is good that you believe, but it's better even that you believe even though you have not seen. But then he would say this in verse 30, very key verses here. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written. So again, John's saying, look, I am writing these things so that you may know this. But these things are written that you may, get this, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. Man, by the goodness of God, these men got to see the resurrected Jesus. They got to see all the miracles that he performed from, from uh, in his ministry, right? Showing power over nature, showing power over everything that man just does not have power over, does not have control over. It was exhibiting that Jesus is God, that the message that he was sharing, there was weight to it, right? There was power, there was authority to it. And Jesus said, look, whosoever uh, believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, right? That's the message he shared. Um, but again, in, in this book, by God's grace, he used these men to record his gospels record the good news that they were eyewitnesses to. And he recorded those as it was, was read here in the last part, verse of, of, of uh, John 20. It was recorded that you may believe. So my friend, I challenge you right now. If you're even here lost, maybe you heard a lot about Jesus, but maybe you're here listening to this video, maybe learning a little bit more about who Jesus is. I challenge you right now. He gave this gospel to you even right now. He recorded it for you. He was, he's even speaking the gospel through his people, even through me right now. 
sharing that gospel with you right now. Um, and he's intentionally pursuing you. He's intentionally inviting you to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. That you would believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, right? The uh, God, Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh. He is also sharing this with you that, that you may believe these things and that believing you may have life in his name, in Jesus' name. But this is my challenge to you, my friend. The tomb of Christ is emptied. Is empty. It's, it's empty. His bones are not there. He's not there, right? That is the uh, most factual, most proven event in history is that the tomb was empty on the third day. Amen? And man, these, these men, these women, they were eyewitnesses to this. They saw him resurrected. They spent many days with him afterwards. They even watched him ascend up again into heaven. Uh, and then that charge to share this same gospel with the world, that the world might believe who Jesus is, that the world might believe in Christ and have life. And we share that same gospel with you right now, that you may believe and that you may have life. That even though you will die, and so why? That if you trust in Christ, though, you will live again. You will live forever. You will live in eternity, in a perfect heaven, in harmony with Almighty God, with Savior God, with all other believers. Bow with me, if you will, in this time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We thank you for your amazing word that you have given, this gospel that you have recorded, that you have kept and given to all generations, this gospel, this amazing, this good news about who Jesus is, this amazing good news about the redemption of us, redemption of fallen man. Even though we have sinned and rebelled against you, even though we are sinners by nature, and we are sinners by choice daily. Uh, we have this amazing good news that you um, have provided the one and only way for us to be saved. Uh, the one and only way for us to be reconciled to you, to have relationship with you again. The one and only way that even though that we will all die, that by trusting in Jesus' name, we will live again. We come to you right now pleading. If there's anyone here that you're convicting, anyone that has lost, anyone that for themselves they've never truly trusted in Christ, we come to you pleading that they would be saved right now, that they would make that choice for themselves right now to ask Jesus to save them. Um, all of us as believers, though, we come to you reminding ourselves of who you are, the almighty God that you are, the one who tells the raging winds and the raging seas to be still and to be calm and that they listen to you, that you have power over all things. We come to you right now praising you. We come to you right now being able to have stillness, being able to be calm, being able to be collective, knowing that you are with us and that you are for us. We love you. We thank you. We praise you in this time, and we pray that we praise you always. In Christ's precious name, amen. Again, thank you for spending this time with us. So looking forward to be back in person uh, with you, but until that time, we are so glad to be able, be able um, through the internet to share God's amazing word with you. I pray that you've taken comfort in this. And, and man, I, I, it's, it's even likely that someone was saved even right now or that someone would be saved later as this uh, message will be online for a long time. We pray that even if you're saved later, that you would sh get in contact with us, that you would share that with us, that we may rejoice with you that you've been saved and that we would open our arms to you and be here to encourage you in your growth. 
um, that we would be there with you as you grow and serve the Lord together. Uh, thank you so much, guys. We love you. Uh, text us. Uh, reach out to us if you have any needs, if you have any prayer requests, or if we can minister to you in any other way, please reach out to us. Uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with you uh, right now. All right. Good night.